Welcome back to the channel friends. As you may know, I love cured, smoked and preserved meats. But sometimes the cost involved in satisfying my cravings and providing for my family is a massive factor. At the same time, making your own cured and preserved specialty meats can take a long or very long time. So before starting any meat curing project, one must also consider the time investment. As you can see, I've already pondered all of these aspects and in today's video, I'm excited to share with you my solution to transforming a very cheap pork belly cut into an excellent and fast to make pancetta. The best part of this recipe being that it can be done anytime and in any season. Before we continue, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Elemental Ashes. In this great online shop, you can find unique, handmade serving boards made out of food-safe reclaimed wood that are perfect for serving pizza and charcuterie boards, picnics, fruit and veggie boards enjoyed on a beautiful autumn day, and at many other friends and family gatherings where aesthetically pleasing and delicious foods are served. At the same time, if you're a photographer or a videographer, then these boards can be a fantastic prop that will make your own art pop and stand out. Thanks again to Elemental Ashes for sponsoring today's video and now let's get back to the recipe. These are the ingredients you will need. 3 tablespoons or 20 grams of sea salt or rock salt, 3 tablespoons or 20 grams of freshly ground black pepper and the 2 kilo or 4.5 pounds of the cheapest pork belly you can find with the skin still attached. And I emphasize pork belly not just pork fat. We need a bit of meat on that slab. Otherwise it won't work or it won't be pancetta anymore. Then the tools you'll need are a food safe electric dryer or dehydrator, a sharp knife and a chopping board, a food grade plastic container and a couple of Ziploc bags. The prep stage is quite simple and we'll start by splitting the pork belly slab into two equal parts. It is essential not to remove the skin. I mention this because I know some people dislike it tremendously, my wife being one of them, but the skin plays a critical role in making this product. After this, with great care, we want to score the skin, and please make sure to punch through to the other side. This way the pancetta will be well cured and the flavor will be the same throughout the entire piece of belly. Once you're done, coat each piece of meat with salt. And spare no effort in this stage, as we want to ensure that every corner, nook and cranny of the pork belly is properly covered in salt. As mentioned above, the reasons for the cuts in the skin were so that the salt penetrates the meat from all sides. If we skip this step, the flavor under the skin will be different than everywhere else, as the skin is a tough membrane and the salt won't penetrate it as well as it will directly through the meat or fat. Extra tip. If you want to avoid making a big salty mess on your kitchen counter, consider using a baking tray. This will keep everything nice and tidy and will cure only the pork belly, not your entire kitchen. When you're done, put the belly in the Ziploc bags and into the fridge it goes for 48 hours or 2 full days. The next stage is as easy as the previous one. When the 2 days have passed, Take the belly out of the bags and pat dry it with a paper towel to avoid excess humidity in the dryer and extend the time it needs to be ready. Then place them on the dehydrator racks and inside they go for 3 days at 70 degrees Celsius setting or 158 Fahrenheit. Throughout this process there is no need to check on it. Just let the machine do its thing and instead prepare some ingredients for a nice dish like spaghetti alla carbonara, a mouth-watering bolognese ragu or whatever else your hungry mind will come up with. Just be ready. As you can see the transition is quite amazing and what was once a generic piece of pork belly three days later emerges as probably the best pancetta most of you out there have ever made. But there's one last step before we can enjoy this majestic cured meat. Peppering. You didn't think I forgot about these 3 tablespoons of freshly ground pepper I mentioned in the beginning. Well, HA! I didn't, and now it's time to use it. Just as the pieces of pancetta come out of the dryer, we want to rub them really well with the pepper because this will add a particular and very delectable aroma to our finished product. Black pepper is a flavor enhancer, whether we're talking about fresh garden tomatoes or homemade pancetta, it works very well. 
Now for the moment of truth. The baptism by knife. Look at that color. And if smell vision was a thing, you would try to reach through the screen and grab a piece. I promise. Whether you're a weirdo like me who just eats it like that with a slice of bread and some fresh yellow onion, or you're a serious enjoyer of select dishes, this pancetta recipe will satisfy both of us and maybe, just maybe, even be the reason why we become friends. Joke aside, once finished, this product is safe to eat just like that or cooked in dishes. Yes, it's amazing and I am so happy and grateful that you decided to join me today for another recipe. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel and if you like what I do and love what you see, please consider supporting me by visiting our sponsor shop called Elemental Ashes and see if anything you see there speaks to your heart. Thank you very much for your time and interest and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.